Justin Ball. I'm the author of The Lightning of Possible Storms, this beautiful book by Book Hug. Look at this you know, gorgeous inside uh, title. I'm really proud of this book. I've been working on this book for almost 20 years. Uh, I started working on it in 2001, and you know, it's a book of short stories. So I, it, I've been writing these stories, rewriting them, and rewriting them trying to get all the stories to work uh, the way I wanted them to work and then trying to get them to hang together in a book uh, just right just the way that I wanted them to hang together in a book because I wanted a book of short stories that uh, you know had an incredible range you know stories that ranged all the way from you know conventional kind of literary realism to far out surrealistic uh, stories where you know capitalism is personified as the main character and uh, we've got you know explosions uh, going off uh, all around town and Christopher Walken appears at one point uh, in one of the stories I've got a woman trying to live inside of her dreams inside of a palace of ice uh, that he, she's dreamed uh, there's all sorts of strange and wild, uh, very different stories in here, but I want them united at the same time under an overarching uh, structure. And so there's a sort of threading story that kind of runs through them and between them. Uh, and so the way that I kind of finally got it to work is where it builds like a novel, and it, where you're sort of following one character throughout this entire book. Um, Although every story is a different set of characters, uh, and you see really, you know, all these different ways in which you get to have your cake and eat it too. Uh, you get to read stories about, you know, wildly different things, uh, but also you'll be following some uh, trajectory where as we're approaching the end of the book, the pace is picking up uh, and it's starting to get us to a point of higher attention. And we're wondering, you know, what's going to happen to this woman, Aaliyah, uh, who is in many ways our main character here. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm going to read to you the final story in the book, which is called About the Author. And this is a story that takes place of the normal place in the book where you'd find the About the Author. Um, it stands alone, so I'm going to read it to you here because it stands alone. But I wanted to note that when you do pick up the book and read through it, and then you come to the, read the story at the very end, it's going to have a very different resonance. You know, you're going to, uh, in some ways, you know, reread it in the light of the rest of the book uh, and it's going to kind of really open your eyes to what I'm doing here uh, but I do think it is a story that's kind of interesting and worth you know uh, giving you a bit of a taste of the book with so again it's called about the author I decided to write an autobiography to prepare for the task I tried to look the word up in my dictionary but could find no mention of such a thing pages have been torn out of the book others have rotted and the day has yet to come when the tome offers even the slightest aid. Yet I keep it on my desk, ready for that day. I know what an autobiography is, of course. Still, it is nice to have a thing defined for you rather than defining it yourself. Best to look to others for guidance. Nobody likes someone who's antisocial. And everybody wants to be liked, though perhaps not loved. No, loved as well, though perhaps in strange ways. What does life amount to, you might ask? Mere words, my autobiography might respond. Mere words. Should that sentence be followed by a question mark instead of a period? Well, how am I to know? I've been reading and rereading my books. Like good books, they are loved. I just reread Yeats and found a line in the poem Meru that would make a great epigraph for my autobiography. His glory and his monuments are gone. My autobiography continues to elude me. It is a day later. Although to read this, you would not realize that, and indeed, have no way of knowing if it's true. All I can think of is stories, and nothing from my own life will stay in my head for long. Yesterday, I thought about a story I began writing over a decade ago, which I haven't thought about for years. In it, a man falls from the CN Tower. I visited the CN Tower and bought a postcard there, which is what inspired the story. When the man falls, nobody sees him except for a young boy who watches as the man falls not to, but through the pavement. In his wake lies a stamped postcard, which the dutiful child drops into a mailbox. Years later, as a man, the child is not at all surprised to discover the postcard amongst that day's mail. What did the postcard say? Well, I haven't written that part yet. Perhaps it will be something wise but heartbreaking, some comment on events in the boy's life between the time of mailing and the time of receiving the card. 
an affirmation of some choice perhaps, long brooded over and half regretted. That seems a bit precious though, and I don't think I'll go down that route, although I am not sure where else I might go. In fact, the whole thing seems too precious, and is perhaps better left unfinished, its redemption still possible. I thought of that story yesterday, and of many other stories. Not a single one has anything to do with an autobiography, so I include the antidote only for amusement's sake. I went for a walk earlier today. Sometimes walking helps me to think of new stories or to solve problems when I am struggling with a story. I need to think about something while walking. I thought I would be able to remember some interesting events in my life worth writing about, but all I could concentrate on was the cold. I was torn between wishing that more snow would melt and wishing that more snow would fall. I always feel warmer when it snows, and is more likely to snow than to melt, but I would rather the snow melted. I should have walked longer than I did, but it was a cold day today. I will walk more tomorrow. So now, I've wasted another day, and I'm no further along in my quest to write an autobiography, How Writers Suffer. There's still a bit of time before bed, but my friends tell me to spend at least some small portion of the day shining my shoes or doing something else society might consider useful. It was a cold day today. There are many cold days in this city. It has been cold for a long time. There are many lights, but the lights do not help. I often feel colder to find myself standing outside or under a street lamp or outside a bar's neon glow. On the corner near where I live, a tremendous structure announces the coming of a new pharmacy, another link in a chain of stores stretching across the whole world. The building has not yet begun. The sign advertises nothing, but still it stands, brighter than the stars, screaming its plastic message at the sky. This is what we have chosen to build, instead of pyramids, our glory and our monuments. You can close the book now. That's the lightning of possible storms.